Hello again and welcome back to our mini series on playing bass in worship. In this video we'll be looking at one of the most important parts of bass playing, scales, keys as well as the natural number system. Scales are often seen as a boring part of learning any instrument but they are incredibly important, perhaps even more so as the bassist as the harmony is underpinned by you. There's one main scale that you should learn and it will help you to make sure that, every, that you're in the correct key every time you hit a note. This scale is the major scale, which if you've learned any instrument or sung along with the sound of music, you probably know the sound of. The great thing about the major scale is that in worship music, all of the notes that you'll ever need to play in any given key will be in that key's major scale. The most concise shape to play the scale in is this. As it keeps all of the notes in the scale within three strings and four frets, so it's easily placed up and down the fretboard. So if we needed to play in G, we could play the major scale here. Or D, or even B flat. When practicing scales, you should always practice with a metronome. It helps with so much more than just being able to play scales. And always start slow, really slow, and build it up gradually as you improve and don't make mistakes. Let's go through the A major scale and I'll show you quickly how you should practice. Let's start off at 70 BPM. Once you're confident that you're able to play that at speed, and my measure is usually playing it twice in a row without fault, then take the BPM up five. Carry on doing this until you reach a speed where you can't play it. Then drop the tempo down by 10 BPM and try and work it back up again. At Birmingham Vineyard, we use a system of music notation called the Nashville Number System. This is where each note of the scale is given a number. So the first note of a scale, the key's home tone, is the one, and then the fifth note of the scale is the five, and it carries on like that. So this is what it looks like on the neck. Start off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to the one. On our chord sheets, you'll find that the main numbers that we use are one, four, five, and six and it's really helpful to know where these are relative to each other. So, I know that I, if I'm on the one chord and I need to go to the four next, all I need to do is go up one string and stay on the same fret, like this. And from the four to the six, it's up a string and down a fret. The best way to practice understanding this number system is finding a selection of songs and playing through them and going through from chord to chord. We have a load of chords charts that you're able to access on the Google Drive from our Sunday song list. For those of you who feel like you have the major scale down, I have a fun exercise to practice to help you know a key all over the neck. What this exercise is, is playing the scale starting on a different note of the scale each time. When I practice it, I start off by playing the scale as I normally would. Then I move to the second note of the chord and play the same scale but starting on the second note. The shape that you're going to play looks a bit like this. Then I repeat this for the fourth, fifth and sixth note of the scale finishing with the original note of the scale, an octave up. Then what I do is stitch all of these together into one exercise, which sounds a bit like this.
as I said before, make sure you practice it with a metronome and start slow and build it up. What this exercise allows you to do is to be on any, almost any note that you might play in a song and you'll know which note is in that key in that position. So if I'm playing on the four chord, I know all the notes in the key will follow this shape. This becomes really important when we start to look at passing notes, fills and licks, which we'll look at in the next video. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you there.